Hello again everyone from Aoyama Park. This is my second video from here today. I decided to make two videos because tomorrow is kind of a busy day. I have a lot of shipping that I have to get done and a couple of classes I have to attend and things like that. So uh, I figured I'd take advantage of the time today and try to get at least two videos done. My friends the crows have decided to uh, leave me in some peace and quiet for a while. Uh, they probably saw some unattended trash on the other side of the park and are enjoying an early supper. Uh, the airplanes are still flying overhead from time to time. Uh, I think I hear one coming as I'm speaking right now. Hopefully it's not too loud. Anyway, uh, today's video is in response to a request I had from a couple of people who wanted to be wanted me to make a video about the Canon FTB SLR camera. So for you guys, this video is for you. Uh, the Canon FTB was introduced in 1971 alongside the Canon's uh, new professional F1. The FTB was a less expensive and simpler model uh, designed for the serious amateur or what we would today call prosumer. Uh, it was a very well-made camera with a few features or similar features to the uh, Canon F1, uh, the most important being a fully mechanical shutter. Uh, this allows you to use the camera if the battery goes dead or malfunctions or you're in a place where you simply can't find a replacement battery, uh, which is a, a, a quite a good feature and disappeared when camera, Canon introduced the A-series cameras later on in the 1970s. Uh, I got this camera a few days ago and when I got it it had a bunch of haze and dirt inside the viewfinder and I really didn't want to try to take it apart because I don't have much experience with these cameras but as I took it apart I found out that it was quite simple to do. You know, there were no uh, tricks or anything which I had to perform all I just had to do was take off hardware, take off the top cover, uh, remove the prism, clean everything out and put it back together and it was quite easy. And when a camera is designed to be uh, maintained or serviced so well, it's likely to be a well-designed and uh, reliable camera. Uh, the, so the top and bottom covers are made of a very thick brass, which is very resistant to dents. Uh, it gives the camera a little bit of weight to it. Uh, I love the, uh, the quality and feel. It's a little bit hefty, but uh, not as heavy as uh, some of the uh, more, I guess, professional quality digital cameras of today. The layout of the camera is quite simple. I'll go ahead and describe the features and functions. Starting on the left side here, we have this thing here which looks kind of like a dial with a, a screw slot in the middle. This is the battery cover and you remove this cover and you would install a MR9 battery back in the day when mercury batteries were still legal. Nowadays you can use a wine cell battery or a PX625 alkaline battery. It works just fine. Next to that we have the uh, film rewind knob which also doubles as the latch which opens the uh, film door on the back. Next to that we have a selector switch for the light meter. Uh, you push it forward to the on position of course to turn on the light meter. Turn it off by putting it in the center and on the bottom uh, if you pull it downward you can check the condition of the battery in the camera. Uh, to check the condition of the battery you have to follow the instructions on this blue sticker on the back. Unfortunately, uh, some of these cameras have lost their stickers over the years, so if your camera is one of those, I'll tell you right now, to check the battery, what you have to do is you have to set the film speed uh, to ASA 100, and then you have to set the shutter speed to 1 1,000th of a second, and then you push down on this switch until it lines up with the blue C, and as you look through the viewfinder, you should see the uh, light meter needle there are two needles, a straight one and a round one. The straight one should come up and line up with a mark which is located about one quarter of the way up on the viewfinder on the right side. If it lines up with that then you've got about 1.35 volts and you're good to go. If it goes up higher than that then you're probably running a 1.5 volt alkaline battery and you're still good to go. If it's below that or doesn't move at all you either need a new battery or your meter is defective. Uh, the light meter system in these cameras is very easy to use, very simple. Uh, it features two, me two meter needles, like I said before, a straight needle and one with a round in. And when you are operating the controls of the camera, if you turn the shutter speed dial, it moves the straight needle, and if you turn the aperture, it moves the one with the round in. What you want to do to take a correct exposure is operate the two controls until you line up the straight needle with the round needle. And that means you've got the, you know, a good shutter speed and aperture combination for a good exposure. 
you can adjust the exposure upward or downward just so long as the, the, the light meter the, the light meter needles line up then you're good to go on the top here we have uh, something which the Canon F1 does not have and that is a hot shoe for the flash you can use a modern strobe flash on the F2B simply by switching the shutter speed to 60 and following the instructions on the flash. If you're using a vintage Canon flash, it has automatic operation. So once again, just set this to 60 and uh, follow the instructions on the flash and the flash will regulate automatically. Next to that, we have a shutter speed button with a locking collar around it. And this uh, button will accept a standard cable release. And of course we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. On the back of the camera we have the eyepiece here which is dovetailed on either side uh, which allows you to use a slide-on eye cup or diopter eye eyepiece. Uh, Canon made diopters in a number of different uh, I guess strengths and you can find these on eBay or places like that in case you want to shoot one of these and you don't want to have to wear glasses while doing it. At uh, the bottom of the cover, uh, bottom cover we have a quarter inch tripod socket and the release button which you must depress in order to rewind the film. The front of the camera we have the same uh, self timer that we find on the Canon F1 and over here we have a flash sync socket. Around this time when Canon was uh, bringing out the uh, the QL series, the Canonet and FTB and such, they brought out these dust covers to cover the flash sync cables, which is a, kind of a good idea. And it prevents anything from getting inside the camera and dirt and stuff like that from uh, clogging up so you can't uh, easily uh, attach your flash cable. Uh, on the lens here we have the standard FD uh, mount, uh, which will work with the bayonet, bayonet mount FD cameras, or you can use the new FD uh, lenses which are much easier to put on and remove. If you have one of these cameras make sure that the shutter butter, shutter bumper excuse me is intact on the front so the, the mirror isn't slapping against the metal. Uh, this camera came originally with the, this particular lens. This is a standard Canon uh, 50mm f1.8 lens. The Canon FD lenses are a remarkable value nowadays. They are superb performers uh, and they are very cheap. Uh, they give you an unbelievable, uh, I guess, uh, performance versus value uh, ratio. So uh, one of the good reasons to buy one of these old cameras is just to be able to use these FD lenses. Because there's so many different options available for so many different kinds of photography. I mentioned in my video about the Canon F1 uh, that I love the 35mm F2 concave lens. Uh, I acquire, acquired another one of those today and I'm waiting for it to come in the mail so I hope to, to go out and shoot with it. Maybe I'll do a review on the lens. Uh, the, the, they're just amazing cameras. Uh, another interesting thing about this camera as I mentioned a moment ago about the QL. The QL moniker or the emblem on the front means quick loading and these cameras are much easier to load than other 35 millimeter cameras. Uh, simply open the film door and lay your film cartridge right here and you can kind of see the directions here showing how to do it. Just pull the film across, lay the leader uh, across the, the, the white wheels here and close the film door and start winding the film and you're good to go. It's a very simple and foolproof system and will uh, prevent you from losing shots. Something I mentioned in my last video that I've done a few times over the years. Anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Canon FTB camera. Uh, a really good camera and a really good value today. Uh, most of these cameras come in the, I guess, uh, satin chrome finish, uh, which is quite uh, popular nowadays. Uh, this one is in the optional black paint uh, over raw brass. I kind of like these because over the years, if you use them a lot, they begin to get a little brassy on the edges, and I think that looks kind of cool. Uh, these are very solid cameras, and compared to the later uh, A series cameras, like the A1 and AE1, I actually prefer the FTB. Though the newer cameras have uh, program modes and more sophisticated uh, light meters and electronically controlled shutters, they do require a battery to work. And I don't really like cameras which are made of plastic too much on the outside. And also they have that problem with the squeaking shutter, which is not a problem that we have with the FTB. The FTB is a really good camera for uh, someone who wants to get into film photography and wants a simple and reliable SLR camera. Uh, it, there's. It, there are a few bad things I can say about it. Anyway, 
I'll be listing this camera and lens uh, soon on my Etsy and eBay stores. Please check the description below the video for links to my stores. I'll be posting more videos about vintage Japanese cameras uh, soon, so if you're interested in seeing any of these videos, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you tune in again soon.